formed in 1867 as an offshoot of the Wednesday Cricket Club, Sheffield Wednesday are one of the oldest professional football clubs in the world and one of the most successful in English football. But despite FA Cup and League wins at the start of the 20th century, their League Cup victory against Manchester United in 1991 is their only major trophy in almost 90 years. A theme throughout Sheffield Wednesday's history has been financial mismanagement, which has seen them relegated from the Premier League in the 99-2000 season and more recently their relegation to League One in the 2021 season following a points deduction for breaking spending rules. Having spent most of its league history in the top flight, Wednesday now find themselves in the third tier of English football, and with the club over £100 million in debt, an immediate return to the Premier League and the financial rewards that this brings is vital to prevent this once great club from sinking any further. Yes, hello everyone, welcome to Rebuilding Sheffield Wednesday, a brand new series where we're going to be taking Sheffield Wednesday, who currently find themselves in the third tier of English football, in a financial hole, back up to the heady heights of the noughties, yes, the 1990s, 1903, 1904, back-to-back -back top flight titles, those are the days that we're going to be aiming for in this save. In the description here it even says we have four top flight titles, the most recent in 1930, an FA Cup most recently in 1935, almost 90 years ago, uh, some second tier titles and the EFL Cup, the League Cup in 1991, a 1-0 win against Manchester United is the most recent trophy we have won until this save. Part of the club vision is to work within the wage budget, although I can't imagine they'd ever say work outside of the wage budget. Uh, most importantly though is win promotion to the championship this year, be competitive in the cups and then part of the five year plan is to win promotion back to the Premier League in that fifth year, although I'm pretty sure we can do one better than that, maybe do it in three years. Now the supporters want us to develop the players using the club's youth system and that is definitely something I want to do as well. One of the main goals for the save is going to be to try and improve our youth production, just looking at who's homegrown at Sheffield United, for example, sort of thinking about reputation, you've got Kyle Walker, Harry Maguire, Aaron Ramsdale, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I mean David Brooks as well. Phil Jagielka, a staple of the Premier League, this is a, it's quite a good selection of players. But comparing that to who's homegrown at Sheffield Wednesday, the only player that stands out really is Jamie Vardy, which, you know, would be a great success story, except he was released at the age of 16 before he played a game because apparently he wasn't good enough for us. And if you just look at his his history, yeah, he's, he's scored everywhere, he's gone. Basically, Sheffield Wednesday said, Jamie, go and get your Premier League title, your England caps, your Champions League football, we'll just... Or just struggle along in League One and the Championship, that's that's fine. Speaking of youth recruitment, it currently sits at one star out of five right now. Very, very poor. Uh, two star youth facilities, not good at all. Definitely something to improve, but with a balance of just under two million, which you know sounds good until you look at the debts and it's £125 million in debt. Paying back half a million pounds a month just for the debt is not, not an ideal situation to be in and the projection is bleak to say the least predicted to be £15 million in the red at the end of the year, but apparently we've got a million pounds in the transfer budget. No wonder we're in this financial mess. But forget about the finances. What are the positives? The squad is a large squad, 25 players. We've got some great talents in here. Barry Bannon is definitely a great player for League One. £17,500 a week though. My God, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's not great. Um, a lot of players on expensive expensive contracts and they're all at the end of their careers really. 32 years old, 30. I mean, the age of the squad is very is very old. I mean, a lot of 28s, 29s, 30, yeah. Judging by potential ability, there are two players who are gonna be great in the future, but they're both on loan. Uh, the only player that's actually contracted to the club who's got a lot of potential is Fasayo Dilibashiru, a central midfielder who is a great box-to-box -box midfielder actually, came through the Manchester City Academy, stolen by Sheffield Wednesday, played 24 times last year in League One. Uh, yeah, build towards the future, a lot of central midfielders, but we, it's fine. The season preview has Derby County's favourites to win the league after their relegation, but we are second favourites, definitely should be getting promoted with this squad. Uh, predicting a 4-4-2 here, yeah, Bannon is our key player. Transfers in. Oh, there have been a lot of transfers in. What? They've brought in 14 players in real life. A bit of a squad overhaul, despite finishing fourth last year, which means the, the team cohesion is obviously very poor. Why have you done that? So I'm going to play through preseason, do some transfers. We've got a Vardy testimonial, but he never played for us. I mean, that's taking the piss, isn't it? Oh, rubbing it in is, is glory. But I'll be back for the opening day of League One for our home game against Portsmouth. Right then, welcome back. Here we are, opening game of the season against Portsmouth. But before we get into that, let's see what's happened in the preseason transfers. Now, in terms of outs, there was nothing major, just some youth players leaving on loan. But Josh Windass has gone to Derby on loan 
Uh, a bit of a strange one, you might think. You know, 28 years old, a great striker for this level, uh, can play as an attacking midfielder as well. But we had about four or five other strikers. Plus, I'd brought someone in before him, um, and he's on 12 grand a week, so had to leave. Um, I mean, he's on the thumbnail. I'm just going to skip to him. Yeah, Fernando Llorente now plays for Sheffield Wednesday in League One. Um, a bit of a strange career move, if you ask me. But six grand a week. He's 37 years old. He can barely run, but great fitness, great jumping reach, great strength. Um, he <laughs> he's not a pressing forward, which is what the formation asks for. But I I don't know. Surely nine paces is something. He's a great player, a free agent most recently with Ibar in Spain. But I could not turn down the pedigree of a striker such as Fernando Llorente. Formerly of Tottenham, of Swansea, Juventus, Athletic Club. Have I just put Swansea in the same bracket of Juventus and Tottenham there? I know I said I wanted to develop youth players, and he is <clears throat> 37 years old, but it's just a one-year deal. Six grand a week is cheaper than Josh Windass, and I just wanted to ensure that we did get promotion this year. I mean, looking at his recent form, he started a game, target forward, seven goals. XG of 4.44, I'll take that. I don't care if it was Rad Radcliffe Olympic. Seven goals in a game... That's, that's that's pretty good in my book. As well as Urente, we brought in Nikola Maksimovic, a 30-year-old centre-back, previously of Genoa and Napoli. Yeah, applying his trade in Serie A, and for some reason he's decided to come to Sheffield to play in League One on a free transfer, six and a half grand a week. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'll, I'll take you, thank you. Obviously, he comes straight in as our best centre-back. is a good championship defender, according to our coaches and our scouts. Uh, I'm not sure why he's done this, but... What a team we're assembling here of aged players. Our final transfer is at the right end of the age spectrum. It's 17-year-old Jamie Bino Gittens, on loan from Dortmund, previously of Manchester City and Reading, played four times in the Bundesliga last year. I'm sure he can do a job in League One. Um, we didn't have great depth on the flanks, but Jamie comes in, can play both flanks pretty comfortably. I mean, he's very fast, can dribble, great technique. Mentals are fine for this level. Uh, physicals, they're fine. I mean, just... Don't ask him to jump for a ball ahead of it. Um, but yeah, that concludes our transfers, which leaves the team looking like this. Actually, before we get into the team for today, just looking at how preseason went and the formations we've been trying out. Uh, we've tried a 4-2-3-1, conceded three goals to our second team. Uh, not a great start. So we moved to the 4-3-3, which went very well. Got a 2-2 draw against Brighton and almost got a draw against Leicester before Jamie Vardy, the bastard, came on and got an 88th minute winner in his bloody testimonial. Uh, we also tried a 4-3-1-2 against Radcliffe Olympic. We had plenty of strikers, and I wanted to see if I could get a two-striker formation to work. Um, this is before we brought in Jamie Bino Gittens, so our depth on the wings wasn't great. But yeah, 19-0. Um, they got one shot away. We had an XG of 11.7. Lorente scored seven goals. I've already gone over that. It might be something we look at in the future potentially. Now Portsmouth are slightly better than Radcliffe Olympic, so we're not going to play with two strikers. We're going to go for the 4-3-3 and it's going to be like this. David Stockdale is going to be in goal with Dominic Iofa at right back, Reese James, not that one, at left back, Mark McGuinness and Nikola Maksimovic in the centre of defence, Will Volks in the defence midfield position with Deli Bashiru and Barry Bannon in the centre of the pitch, Malik Wilkes as the inside forward on the right, Jamie Bino Gittens as the inside forward on the left and Lee Gregory up front. I was tempted to start Fernando Llorente, but it's the first game of the season. He's still new to the squad. We've got plenty of other players to integrate, so he's just going to start on the bench for today. But let us see how we go. Right, we're favourites here. Come on, lads, show us what we can do. Portsmouth are definitely a good team in this division. You'd expect them to be there in the ch in the playoffs at least at the end of the season. But come on, we're Sheffield Wednesday. We're Sheffield bloody Wednesday, not Tuesday. Wednesday. Here we are, nine minutes in. Portsmouth with the corner on that right side. Larry puts it in. It's a good head away by, Orpha, by, uh, by Dominic Iorfa, but it's straight back to Portsmouth. He goes a long range shot. Oh, Tom Larry, a fantastic goal. Was not closed down, had too much space and got a, a long range effort off. It is a fantastic goal and Portsmouth take the lead. Nine minutes in, not a good start. Here, yeah, Bannon with the corner now. 12 minutes in, can we get an immediate equaliser? Maksimovic hits the post and it goes wide. It's a good effort there. Front post corner, but no, we could not get the equaliser. Still 1-0. Down the line to Dale, there's plenty of men surrounding him and we do get the ball back. And now Jamie Bino Gittens into the middle and now Deli Bashiro into Malik Wilkes. Through to Lee Gregory, through Lee Gregory. Always put it wide, what a plonker he is. One on one. How has he not even hit the target there? Stupid. Five minutes before half time, we've completely dominated this game. Portsmouth have had one shot on target. We've had 1.13 XG and there it is, half time. Somehow we found ourselves 1-0 down despite the domination. I mean, 13 shots to, to Portsmouth 2. Uh, no, it's been terrible so far. Show me something else. We do not deserve to be behind in this. 
I think I'm going to go with two strikers. Lorente is going to come on for Bino Gittens. Um, he played so well in that friendly. I don't know why I didn't start him. Portsmouth now. We'll go long, but it's a poor ball forward. No, it's not. Karoma gets the ball, gets the knockdown. Plenty of Portsmouth then pushing forward, but it's a poor pass. And now we can counter. Lorente, surely. Oh, Malik Willicks. Willick, Shulk, surely shoot, Malik Wilkes, what's his name, puts it wide, oh there's a chance there, a great ball by Urente, plenty of men push forward, but no, you are then, 53 minutes in, Maksimovic, the Serbian, what's he done there, Bishop's coming forward for Bishop now, for Portsmouth, Bishop, surely don't score, he's blazed over, what was Maksimovic doing, thinking League One's easy, loses the ball, poor there, right, half an hour to go, we need to change something here, Lorente is going to be a attacking target forward, Come and encourage them, and we've got a corner. Barry Bannon now. 25 minutes to go left in this game. Bannon puts the corner in. It's headed clear. But there's Deli Bashiro on the edge of the box. Now, can we put this back into the... Pl There's plenty of tall men in there. Mark McGuinness. Oh, my goodness. What has he done? Mark McGuinness from about, I don't know, 60 yards out. 80, 100 yards out. Mark McGuinness on his debut. The loney curls it into the far corner. What a fantastic finish there. A good ball by Deli Bashiro, Bashiro to Reese James to Mark McGuinness. What is he thinking? The centre-back curls into the top corner, off the post, and now can we go for the winner? Come on. Come on, lads. Portsmouth with a chance now. 20 minutes to go. Pack standing over the free kick. What's he going to do? He's going to aim for the top corner. I can feel it. He shoots. It's a save by Stockdale, but it's a just kind of parries it into the box for some reason. It's cleared finally, but what was he doing there? Uh, Callum Patterson's going to come for Lee Gregory as well. He is very versatile. That's all I can say. Seven minutes, six minutes. Got to go attacking here, I guess. We've been so good in this game. Oh, come on. Come on, encourage them. We've got a corner. Barry Bannon. Surely not. Lorente. Oh, he's headed it over the bar. Oh, what an introduction that would have been on his debut to get a last-minute winner, but it is over the bar, and it looks like it might be that. 20 seconds to go. Yeah, they're pushed forward. They're just going to boot this long. Two seconds left to go. Are they going to get to take this goal kick? No. How, how is that not time-wasting? This stood around for about 30 seconds on over the goal kick. Oh, we deserve to win that. We had much better shots. We had so many yellow cards, though. Um, the XG, we... we. I think we performed better in the first half. Maybe I shouldn't have changed the formation. Because Portsmouth came back into it. Um, no, I'm not good enough. We should, that, we should have been winning that. There it is then. 1-1. One, one. Uh, a draw. It's better than a defeat. We should have we should have won that. Got st stole the result there. We've been fined. Uh, too many yellow cards, apparently. That is gonna it's great for the finances. It's just great. Uh, Mark McGuinness, a great debut. But yeah, 1-1 one, one draw. Not a great start. Now, in terms of when we're back next, I'm thinking the Barnsley-Plymouth games at the beginning of September. Barnsley, a Yorkshire derby. A fierce rivalry. And Plymouth are expected to be at the top of the table come the end of the season. So it will be a tough test. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, then be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe so you don't miss the rest of this series. If you're excited for this series as well, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another episode as we are going to be attempting, no, we're going to be succeeding in rebuilding Sheffield Wednesday, taking them back up to the glory days of the noughties, the 19 noughties, and take them to European glory, produce those youth players, and win games, I guess. So, I'll see you next time.